High stats, best armor, best farms, important topics in Destiny build crafting that have a lot of debate and confusion around them. The simple answer most people give is that artifice armor is the best. That might be technically true, but that's just in stat totals, not farming or distributions. For 99.9% .9 of players, it isn't the best armor to chase. Today, let's go over exactly how legendary armor works, the various farms in the game, and determine which are the best sources for god roll armor. First, understand that not all legendary armor is created equal. At base, their stats follow some set rules. Number 1, the stat total will range from 44 to 68. Number 2, the minimum value of a stat is 2, the maximum is 30, and the value can never be 3, 4, or 5. Number 3, the 6 armor stats are split into 2 groups. The top group, Mobility, Resilience, Recovery, and the bottom group, Discipline, Intellect, and Strength. Number 4, the sum of each group ranges from 22 to 34. To fully understand how stats are distributed, we need to talk about plugs. Whenever an armor piece drops, a set of predefined triplet groups of numbers called plugs are used to determine the armor's stats, its totals, and distribution. Two plugs are generated for each grouping, with each plug following observed rules. Sums range from 11 to 17, minimum value is 1, max is 15, and 2, 3, and 4 are never present. For most players, you don't need to worry about this. This is just the inner workings of armor, but it helps explain how stat focus modifiers work. Now let's define high stat armor and such modifiers. The term high stat has a different definition depending on who you ask. Hardcore players will say that it's anything 64 stats or greater. When looking where the game designates high stat armor, community data suggests it's a shifting of minimum total stats by modifying which plugs are used. This case, removing those with a total less than 14. Basically, instead of 44 stats as the minimum, it's more like 56. This then shifts the median and average to something in the 60s. You're not guaranteed 60 plus armor, you're just more likely to get some. Other modifiers more directly impact stat distributions, how spiky stats are, and minimum values. Arguably, stat distribution is more impactful than high stat totals. People get hung up on seeing a big number, but if those stats aren't in anything useful, then what's the point? So, let's talk about specific stat plug filters, modifiers to influence minimum values of a chosen stat. Boiling it down, there are two, but they can be combined. The one known to most players is the min stat plugs modifier, found in ghost armorer mods. These guarantee one stat a minimum value of 10, done so by removing all plugs that have a value of 1 in that stat. The other modifier is the guaranteed max stat plug. This is found in armor from Pit of Heresy's final boss. This guarantees a plug to have one of its values be 15, the other's 1. Simply put, it guarantees a minimum of 16 in a stat. The game and player can then combine these filters for further effects. The Pit of Heresy Dungeon in Legendaries has the max stat plug for each stat grouping, so you're guaranteed a minimum of 16 in two stats. Combine this with an armor or mod to guarantee a minimum of 20 in a stat. Master Raids and Solstice have the min and max stat plug modifiers already combined, guaranteeing a minimum of 20 in a stat, with the player able to use a Ghost Armorer mod to guarantee a minimum of 10 in another stat. Solstice is unique though in that you can actually apply the armor mod in the same stat grouping, forcing the third stat in that group to be 2. Okay, that was quite a lot. Now let's discuss high stat armor sources and the best farms. While not technically farmable, Prime Ingrams, Devrim, Failsafe, Zur, and the Season Pass can all have high stat armor. Season Pass armor is great for those that are newer to the game and might not have hordes of good armor. Other options, just check regularly. For intentionally farmable stuff, let's start with guaranteed high stat armor. This includes Trials of Osiris and Iron Banner, which have limited weak and weakened availability but can quickly earn armor through vendor reputation Ingrams. Normal Raids and Dungeons, which have several quick encounters like Kali and Templar, but to farm them they have to be the weekly featured activity, use spoils on their final chest, or be the most recently released dungeon. Seasonal activities like Salvage and Deep Dive, which when using keys award high stat armor, seasonal ingrams, and deep sight weapons, but those keys are random drops. And higher difficulty expansion content, like weekly campaign missions and Wellspring which also award masterworking materials and ascendant alloy for weapon crafting, with the downside of higher difficulty, no guarantee of drops, and no matchmaking except on the lowest difficulty. Simply put, I don't recommend trying to farm these activities for armor, there are far better options as you'll see. Just be on the lookout for potentially good drops when doing them. On the other hand, let's discuss activities that both guarantee high stats and certain stat distributions. 
Two activities that guarantee two max stat plugs, meaning one stat in each group having a minimum value of 16, are that of Pit of Heresy's final boss and Legend Dares of Eternity. Farming Pit's boss Zolmak is by far the easiest, taking about two minutes to checkpoint farm. Casually do it each week, and then farm it to your heart's content when it's the weekly featured dungeon. For an always available farm, you can do Legend Dares, but that doesn't guarantee an armor drop and requires more people and a sufficient power level. Decent if you need the dares weapons and want something easier than master level content. And for even spikier stats, pair these with a ghost armor mod to guarantee at least 20 in one stat. For spikier distributions and more available farms, look to master raids. These have a weekly stat focus that guarantees 20 in a stat. Pair this with an armor mod to guarantee a minimum of 10 in another. However, this must be in another stat grouping as the ghost armor mod seems to get overridden when in the same group as the focus. Some cons, only the newest raid has master difficulty always available. Older raids must be the weekly feature to be farmable and have master mode. And the weekly stat focus is random, so you'll have to check each week to see if it's something you're interested in. Some pros, encounters will always drop armor. You can buy armor from the final chest with spoils that have this stat focus, and some master encounters are relatively short and easy, like Templar and Vogue and First Encounter of Ron. For technically the best armor, Artifice Armor, you have Master Dungeons. These have a unique socket, allowing the player to apply a zero energy cost mod of plus three to any stat, thereby increasing the stat total and possibly being the decider for reaching the next ability tier. However, for most players, this is not a good armor farm. This changes periodically due to bugs and patches, but there are no specific stat focus modifiers and you're not even guaranteed armor to drop. If you're after the best of the best, then this is for you. Farm the newest dungeon, or wait for some to be the weekly featured. However, leaving it up to RNG for stat distributions and drops is not great, especially since there are many other sources that guarantee certain stats, as well as activities that are easier and more accessible. For the most accessible and comboable farm, look to Seasonal Vendor Armor Focusing. Updated in Season of the Deep, once you have the high stat focus upgrade, armor you focus will now actually drop with high stats. And not just with high totals, their distributions mirror that of Pit of Heresy's two max stat plugs. So, two stats with a guaranteed minimum of 16, which can be further boosted to 20 when combined with an armorer mod. And what's great is that seasonal ingrams can drop from any activity completion, with increased drops from endgame activities and guaranteed drops from seasonal activities. So, to farm optimally, you want to combine seasonal armor focusing with the previously discussed farms, like Pit of Heresy or Master Raids. Lastly, the best specific stat focus farm, Solstice. This three week event allows you to upgrade your armor with Silver Ash to the point where you can pick a stat to be guaranteed at least 20. You can then combine this with a Ghost Armorer mod in two ways. Have your Armorer mod in a different group from your Spark to guarantee one stat of at least 20, the other at least 10. Use your Armorer mod in the same stat grouping to make one stat at least 20, the other at least 10, and then making the third stat guaranteed 2. This is great! guaranteed three stat values, further limiting how the armor can roll. So like me, I don't care for mobility on my Warlock, so I'll invest a spark in resilience and a mod in recovery. The limitation of this farm is that it isn't fast, about 30 minutes to get the materials to focus an armor piece and it's only available for three weeks a year, but it is free to all players and very easy. Plus, like the seasonal vendor focusing, you can combine this farm with other activities so you can get more loot for your time. In summary, Armor has a set of defined rules to determine stat totals and distributions. There are a few modifiers the game and player can use to further influence how Armor stats are allocated. For best Armor farms, if you're free to play, that's Master Raids, Iron Banner, and Legend Dares. For newer or casual players, that's Seasonal Vendor Angram Focusing and the Pit of Heresy Dungeon. For Endgame and Hardcore players, that's Master Raids and Pit of Heresy. For the most optimal farms, you want to combine these methods. And when available, Solstice is amazing. As for Artifice Armor, you should ignore it unless you're okay with difficulty, grinding, and terrible RNG. It is the best armor, but please, stop putting it up on such a high pedestal. It's just three extra stat points and a miserable grind. Hopefully, everything here is correct, made sense, and stays true for a long time. And a massive shout out to the many great Destiny community members for figuring this stuff out over the years such as Miyago, the Destiny Massive Breakdowns community, and Jung Chu He. I'll leave several articles and sources down in the description for those that want even more information. If you found this guide useful, then leave a like and subscribe for future content. As always, I am your Commander Pika. Be kind, have fun, and I'll see you on the battlefield.